Savings expectations for a comfortable retirement increased by 10% in 2021 to $1.04 million. Well, this means that by that average retirement age of about 65, you should have that much to cover your cost of living. Joining us on this Money Monday with more on how to retire smart is Stephen Husky, financial advisor at Husky Financial Group. It's great to have you. Thank you very much. So what do you think about that number, first of all? I think there's a lot of variabilities that go inside of that. I think the bare minimum should be a million dollars and working f you know, up from there based on your lifestyle and how you want to live while you're retired right. should greatly depend on how much you save. Now, that's a number for today, but let's say that's folks- That's the present value, correct. That's the present value. Yeah. So, I mean, for someone who still has about 20 more years to work, that number could increase almost exponentially. Yeah, with the average rate of inflation being 3%, it could be three to $4 million by the time you're ready to actually retire. Boy, okay, so there's a lot to dive into here, right. but let, why don't we talk a little bit more about uh, what people should be taking out of their retirement. I mean, y you don't wanna be too, too conservative. You wanna right. enjoy life, but you don't wanna be frivolous either. Well, I wanna use the example of, of climbing a mountain. Right? So there's gravity that affects you differently climbing up the mountain. It's exponentially different climbing down the mountain. So you have to consider the inherent economic factors that it will impact you on the other side. Mm -hmm. So we have tax deferred vehicles, we have health issues, we've also got inflation and, um, and mortality. So those are the five different economic factors that can impact you. So you have to plan for each one of these as part of your entire portfolio. And this is called the 4% rule. Yeah, well the 4% rule is the typical withdrawal rate that most advisors or you know, gurus online are gonna talk to you about. You have a bunch of capital, you pull out 4% at the beginning of the year and your, your retirement account is supposed to replenish that 4% by the end of the year mm -hmm. so you can keep that legacy and that capital on hand. You can keep doing it every single year. Oh, interesting, okay. So, it, but it gives you a good roadmap and a place to start though when you're thinking about, you know, whether you wanna buy a new home, if you wanna build a home, if you wanna take vacations, if you wanna right. give your grandkids uh, a, a nice gift or something to that effect. So you wanna kind of live within those means, but there's, there's other factors and that rule may not always apply. Right, there's some inherent challenges with the 4% rule. Yeah, and tell that us being that, that you're on a fixed income. So if your if your legacy or your capital stays the same, as does your gross income. And taxes can change, you know, with legislation changes, but inherently they're going to stay roughly the same as well. So if you're making a fixed income, but prices are increasing over time, you're essentially getting poorer every single year. And that's why you see people in their 80s and sometimes 90s really struggling on a fixed income. Right, and we even saw during the Great Recession a lot of those people going back to work mm -hmm. because they had actually lost a lot of money due mm -hmm. to the subprime mortgage debacle. But yeah. I wanna talk a little bit further about, you know, just kind of planning for those unforeseen challenges in life. So, I mean, mm -hmm. when we're talking about mortality, also health, illness. Mm -hmm. So where should people kind of start and what, what do you think they should be a little bit more conservative than that 4% or do you think you know, they could be a little bit more generous with themselves? I think the question is, is how do you adapt mm. to different inherent economic factors that are gonna be you know, a drag on your portfolio? You know, we don't wanna see necessarily the one bucket approach, the 4% rule that everybody's doing right now. We believe at Husky Financial in a three bucket system one being strictly for guaranteed income sources, such as your social security, your pensions, any annuities, and social security is the largest annuity in America. Then you have one bucket that's strictly for true liquidity, something you can pull from if you have a health issue, something you can pull from if you have an unexpected large expense. And then on the other bucket is your variable growth bucket. This is what we call our play checks money. You know, something that allows us to go take those vacations to be a little bit more aggressive in that particular section of our portfolio. And as you spend that down over time, your taxes go down because your capital's decreasing. And so if that's the case, your income is increasing and you're combating inflation. You're also not worried as worried about volatility because you're able to increase your income over time. And that's kind of where you're living in that pocket. That's where you wanna be. 
That's exactly right. You have a better yeah. lifestyle overall, and you have a pay, you have your paychecks, which covers your your fixed expenses, and you have your playchecks, which takes care of all the other things you'd like to do in retirement. I like that playchecks. Yeah. Now I get it. Playchecks. Yeah. I didn't know what that meant. I was going to ask you. So playcheck means well, I mean it's the opposite of a paycheck, right? Right. I mean you get to pay, you get to play. You cash that money, you cash and then the you money. go out and you spend it on whatever you want. Absolutely. Right. Well, when you come visit us the next time, I want to talk about where people should be putting their money away because when we're talking about retirement. You know, some millennials, they're socking away money, they're using their savings wisely. Others, they're mm -hmm. just spending their money and racking up credit card debt. But the differences between 401ks, IRAs, Roths, Roth IRAs, all those different products that people can be actually putting money towards. I want to talk a little bit more about that with you the next time you come and visit us. We can do that. Promise? Promise. All right. Yeah. We're back after this.